In this video, we're going to make a radar chart as commonly used in RPGs to display stats. We're going to create a class to hold our stats and then we're going to make the UI script to dynamically generate and update our radar chart. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Alright, so here's what we want to create. We have the radar chart element in here with our five underlying stats. Over here we can see the inner values, our stats go from 0 to 20, and you can see the radar correctly displays those inner values. With these nice buttons, I can test to update, so as you can see, the fence goes down, and that edge goes down, goes up, and goes up. So as I modify, you can see that the radar chart correctly updates to any single value. And here, we are using a mesh in order to dynamically draw the radar chart based on these underlying values. Now, we're going to start off by creating a simple stats class and set it up to hold a single stat. Then we're going to create the script to represent that stat in the UI along with some buttons to test it. Then we're going to modify our script to hold multiple stats. After that, we're going to learn how to create a mesh in the UI and display two stats as a simple triangle. And then we're going to add all of the remaining stats and play around with the values. So we will be creating both the radar chart and the underlying nice clean stats class. So if all you want to see is how to create the UI mesh, then skip to the later part of the video. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it! So here we are in a completely empty scene. Now let's start off by creating a class to hold our stats. So here in the project folder, go to scripts, create a new C-sharp script, and let's just call this stats. Okay, here's our code. Now first we're going to get rid of mono behavior since this class is going to be extremely simple. So get rid of all of this. Now all we really need to store is the value of each stat. However, as always, let's make sure that we write clean code. So here, for example, your first instinct might be to make a bunch of simple public ints. That would work, but you would be exposing the values to every other class in your program and they could easily be modified outside the valid ranges. So it would not be good code since it would be very easy to break. So instead, this class will store all of the underlying values privately and only expose functions to modify them. So in here, we make a private int, let's call it our attack stat. And then we expose a public void set attack stat amount. So now we have this function exposed in order to set our attack stat, and in here we can validate our new amount. So in this case, all we really want is to make sure that the value is above a certain minimum and below a certain maximum. So let's store those minimum and maximum as constants. So all the way up here, a public static int for the stat min, and let's say the min is zero, and a public static int for the stat max, which in this case, let's put it at 20. So every single stat can go from zero to 20. This also makes it very easy to modify. So if you had a game with a stat max of 100, you would need to just change this constant and everything else would work fine. So in here we do our validation. So just like that, we are clamping our value between a minimum and a maximum. All right, so this should do it. Now let's make a function to return the current value. So we are again exposing a public function in order to return the value. And now all we need is a constructor to set the starting value. Alright, so far so good. We have nice clean class to hold our stat value. Obviously later we will expand it to support all the other stats, but for now let's keep it simple and make everything work with a single stat. Now that we have this set up, let's make a testing script to test our code. So back in the editor, let's make a new c -sharp script. Let's just call this testing. And let's create a new game object. And we simply drag our testing script onto it, okay? Now over here in our testing script, this will indeed extend mono behavior. And here let's go into our private void start. And in here we can test our class. So let's first instantiate our stats object. So we are instantiating it with 10 on our tax stat amount. And then let's simply do a debug.log on our stats.get attack stat amount. Okay, so if everything goes well, we should be able to see a 10 in our console. Let's test. 
And if there it is, a 10 on the console. Okay, great. All right, so we can now create and read our stats class. This will be the basis that we're going to use in order to display our radar chart. So let's make our UI object. So over here, let's go into the canvas. If you don't like to know how the canvas is set up, check out my video on how I do my basic setup for the UI. So in here, all we need to do is create a new game object. Let's call this the UI stats radar chart. And inside, let's create a UI image for our background. And over here on the project folder, I have this nice background. Here it is, a nice radar chart with five sides. And let's also add a nice text object just to be our attack text label. All right, so here's our basic visual setup. We have a background. On top of the background, we're going to dynamically generate our radar chart, and we're going to have labels on the various edges to indicate what each edge re represents. Now, in order to start things simple, instead of the radar chart, let's start off with a very simple bar. Once we have all the code working with a simple bar, then we'll work on replacing the bar with a radar chart mesh. So over here, let's create a new image. This will be our bar. Let's simply put the anchor on the bottom, put it on zero, zero, and make it a rectangle like that. Now just stretch it to occupy right there on the edge and just like that, okay. So this bar will work for our testing. Through code, all we're going to do is modify the scale in here. We're going to modify the Y and essentially if it's a Y of one, it's going to be right at the edge. So fully max that on the attack. And if it's less, then it's less. So it goes from zero to one. Okay, great. Now let's make the code to handle all this. So in here, make a new C -sharp script. This will be the UI stats radar chart. And let's just drag it onto our main game object. Okay, like that. All right, so now in here, let's make a function to receive our stats object and store it. All right, so we have our private stats, our inner object, and we have a public function in order to set the stats. Now let's make a function to update the visual. And in here, we're going to update the bar. So let's see how we set it up in the editor. In here, let's just rename this. Instead of image, let's call it the attack bar. So we're going to grab the reference, this game object, and we're going to modify the scale on the Y. So this is where we need to modify our visual, which means in here, we need to go into the stats and to get the attack set amount. However, we want to get a normalized value rather than the actual amount. So let's add that to our stats class. So over here, let's make a public, we'll return a float. Let's call it get attack stat amount normalized. And we return our normalized value. So really all we need is attack stat divided by the maximum. Now, since these are two ints, we need to make sure to convert one of them to float in order to get a return float. All right, so that's it. Now this function will return a value between zero and one. And now we can go back in here and we can now use this function to get the value that we're going to set into our attack bar y axis. All right, that's it. This should do it. Now let's just update it over here. When we set stats, we update the visual. Okay. So this should be working. Now all we need to do is call this function. So let's go into our testing script. And over here, first we need a reference to the UI stats radar chart. So let's add it as a serialized field for our private UI stats radar chart. And with that reference, after we create our stats object, we simply call set stats and we pass in our stats object. Okay, so our testing starts testing. It instantiates the stats. It calls set stats on our UI script and the UI script sets the internal stats and updates our stats visual based on the amount that is on the attack stat. So over here, we are currently with 10 out of a maximum of 20. So our bar should be at half size. Again, this is a serialized field, so let's drag it in the editor. Over here is the testing game object. There's our field, and let's just drag this onto it. All right, that should do it. Let's test. And yep, there it is. Our nice bar is at half size. So we correctly have communication between our stats class and the UI display object. Now let's add some testing buttons to modify the stats amount in real time. For that, over here in the testing class, 
For some testing buttons, there are some on the CodeMonkey utilities. As long as you can download the utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. The utilities, I have a function to make some nice testing buttons, so let's use that. I want to have the button to increase and want to decrease the stat amount. Right now, the only function we have to modify is in order to set the amount. So let's set some helper functions in order to increase or decrease by one. So over here on the stats class, let's make a public void, call it increase attack stat amount. Another one for a decrease. So in here, all we're doing is we set it to the current one plus one or the current one minus one. Okay, great. Now we can use this functions on our button. All right, so we should have two buttons that will allow us to test increasing and decreasing our tax stat amount. Now, when we do that, we need to make sure that our UI updates. Right now, it's only updating when we set the stats. So since we have mono behavior, we can simply use our private void update and over here, we just update our stats every frame. All right, let's test. Okay, so here we are with the two nice testing buttons. And as you can see, it starts off at half. Now let's increase and see if the bar increases. And there you go, it increases. And let's see the maximum. And yep, it reaches maximum, can no longer go higher. Now the minus, and yep, it goes down and reaches zero. And there you go, doesn't go down anymore. All right, awesome. So we now have the UI correctly displaying any value that we have on the underlying stats object. Now there's one thing we can improve in here. Right now on our UI, we are updating on every frame. So this works as you can see, but it is quite wasteful. Most of the times it's updating when the underlying stats didn't change at all. So we are really just wasting CPU cycles unnecessarily. So let's make sure we only update when needed. For that, we can go into our stats class. And in here, we're going to fire an event whenever the stats have changed. So let's go up here in order to make a public event use the standard event handler and let's call it on stats changed. So we have this event and we're going to trigger this event whenever the stats changed. So in here, let's fire off the event. All right, so when we call the function to stat the attack stat, then we fire our event. All right, so far so good. So right now you can see another example of why we should write code this way instead of just exposing a public int. If we did that, then we would have no way of knowing when the value would change and we would be forced to update on every single frame. But since we wrote our code nice and clean, then we have this function, which is the only function that modifies this variable. So we can simply add our event in here and everything will work perfectly. So now we can go back into our UI script. And in here, when we receive our stats, let's subscribe to our event. So on sets changed event, we subscribe to that. And when we get that event, then we do update our stats visual. All right, and now we can get rid of it from the update. So it will only update when the stats changed. So let's test and make sure that everything still works exactly the same. So here we are, still at half and increase and yep, there you go, goes up and goes down. Okay, awesome. So we have everything working with nice clean code and without wasting any CPU cycles. Okay, awesome. So now that we have everything working with a single stat, it's time to handle multiple stats. So here back in our stats class, right now we have a value and various functions to modify that value. If we were to keep this pattern, then we would have to duplicate all of these functions for every single stat type that we wanted. That would work, but would obviously result in a ton of horrible duplicated code, so that is not the correct way to do it. Instead, let's make a nested class that will contain all of the logic for a single stat. So let's go in here, we're going to make a private class, call it single stat. And this will represent a single stat. So now essentially we're going to put everything related to this stat inside our single stat class. And now let's remove all of the references to the attack stat specifically. So this is just a stat and every single one of these functions is just set stat amount. Right, so there you go, no more references to our single attack stat. So now this class will represent any type of stat we want, and over here on our stats class, 
we will instead hold an instance of each single stat for each stat type. So in here, let's make a private of type single stat. And here we will have our attack stat. And now we can also have our defense stat. So on the constructor, we'll receive the amount for our attack and also an int for the defense stat amount. And now in here, we instantiate our two variables. So let's also make a constructor for our single stat class. So we receive the stat amount and we just set it like we were doing previously. And in here, let's instantiate our attack stat equals a new single stat with our attack stat amount. Same thing for the defense. All right, so we have pretty much our two objects and everything is nice and cleanly separated. Now we still have an issue with our event being inside the stat instead of outside. And we also have an issue over here in our UI code since this function no longer exists. So we need to expose functions to modify each specific stat type. So let's go back into our stats. And over here, let's copy pretty much every single one of these functions. However, in here, every single one of these is going to receive an extra argument to select which stat to modify. In order to define the various stat types, let's go up here in order to make a public enum for our stat type. And in this case, we have attack and defense. Now in all of these functions, we're going to receive a stat type. Okay, so far so good. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. Now we just need to get the single stat that matches up with this type. So we have a function which takes a stat type and returns our single stat object. This is a private one since no one outside will ever deal with this. And all these functions simply call the inner function on our single stat. All right, so that's it. And now we can also get rid of this error since the event will be called on our stats and not on the single stat. Now over here, just like this, we have one potential issue with our event, which is the event is only fired if it goes through this one, but over here, we're going directly through the increased stat. So we need to modify it to make sure that everything goes through only this one. So on the increase, instead of going straight into the single stat, we go into the stat amount. And now we can go down into this one and remove these two. All right, so our code is now much more simplified and everything looks great. And that's it. We should now have all our code correctly working with two stats, which we can expand to any amount. All we would need to do is add more values into this enum and add more inner variables. So let's test out our stats with two stats. So let's first go into testing. And in here, you can see all these errors. So that one has a 10 on the attack stat, and let's put a two on the defense stat. Let's get rid of this debug.log. Over here, we have these buttons. Let's add two more for testing out our defense. All right, so we have updated everything. Now we instantiate the stats with 10 on the attack and two on the defense. And we have our buttons, which this one increases the attack and this one increases the defense. So as you can see, the only thing we need to change is over here, the type on the argument. So let's go into the UI. Now here we have the attack bar. Let's get the stat amount normalized of type attack. And then we're going to have another bar for the defense and let's call it the defense bar. Now let's make it in the editor. So we have the attack bar and let's rotate it and put over here. This is the defense bar.
All right, that's it. So let's test and see if we can correctly see a bar showing the attack stat and another one showing the defense stat. And yep, here we are, and the attack is indeed at half and defense almost at zero. And we can use our nice buttons in order to increase and decrease the attack and also the defense. All right, so we have our two stats values working perfectly. And the way we set up the code also makes it very easy in order to modify things to support many more. Okay, awesome. So now it's the time to finally replace our testing bars with a custom mesh in order to draw our radar. So for that, let's go into the editor. And in here, let's take our radar chart. And instead of having these bars, so let's get rid of them. Instead of the bars, we're going to draw a mesh. Now, in order to draw a mesh, let's create a new empty game object. Let's call this the radar mesh. And inside, we're going to have a canvas renderer. This is what we can use in order to render a mesh on our canvas. All right, so that's it for our UI setup. Now let's go into the code and grab the reference to this canvas renderer. So here in the radar chart is where things get interesting. Now I've done a couple of videos on how to create the mesh from code, but I'll go over it again in here. On the update stats visual, we create a new mesh object. Now a mesh is essentially composed of vertices, UVs, and triangles. The vertices are the various points of our mesh. The UVs define how the texture is shown on each vertex, and the triangles define which vertices compose a triangle polygon. Now that might seem confusing, but it all becomes very easy once you see it in action. So first we define our arrays. So an array of vector threes for our vertices. Then we have an array of vector twos for our UVs. And finally, we have an array of ints for our triangles. All right, so these are all the values we need to, in order to display our mesh. Now, just for starters, let's simply start with one triangle. So for one triangle, we need three vertices. Then we need as many UVs as we have vertices, so also three. And for the triangles, we're only going to spawn one triangle, so we need three points to do it, so three. Okay, now let's set the vertices. So let's start off with vertices. Set the zero index in order to be on a vector 3.0, so this will be our origin. Then let's put one right above, so on 0, 100, will be the vertex on index one. And then on index two, let's put it above and to the right. Okay, so these are our points. For right now, our graph will be a solid color, so we don't actually need to bother with our UVs. So we'll leave them all at zero, and now let's modify our triangles. So you have index zero, one, and two. Now over here, we need to set the indexes for the vertices, and the triangle polygon is composed of three vertices. So in this case, it's very simple. We start off at the origin, so start off on index zero. Then we go into this one, which is right above it. So we go into index one, and finally we complete our triangle by going into the other vertex, so two. So just like that, we have our nice triangle. Now we upload our rays into the mesh. And that's it. So we have successfully created our nice mesh. Now we need to display it, so that's where the canvas renderer comes in. Let's go up here in order to grab our reference to the canvas renderer. Let's grab it on our awake in order to grab our reference. Okay, we have our canvas renderer reference. So now we can go down here and all we need to do is call set mesh and pass in our new mesh. All right, so the canvas renderer now has our mesh. And in order to see it, we also need to pass in a material. So we need to call the function set material. Over here, as you can see, we need a material. So let's go up here to make a serialized field for a material. And this material is what we're going to use in here. And for now, let's set the texture into no. All right, so that's it. Our triangle should now be visible in our UI. Let's just drag our material. So in here, let's create a new material. Let's call this the radar material. 
and in here let's modify the shader in order to use the UI default and let's tint it in nice green okay like that so back in here and let's drag the reference to our material and let's test and everything should work and yep there it is we have our nice triangle being drawn in our UI so if we pause we can go and see that it is indeed being drawn right in here on this object and we can move it around and there it is we have a nice triangle mesh being drawn directly onto our UI. So over here, as you can see, this point up here is indeed on 0, 100, and this one here is indeed on 100, 100. Okay, so we now know how to draw a simple triangle using a custom mesh on the UI. Now let's use the values from our stats in order to set the two points in our triangle. So let's go in here in order to define our correct vertexes. So let's say the vector three for our attack vertex, this one goes straight up. So let's use vector three dot up. And now we multiply it by a certain radar chart size. So we can go here in the editor in order to test out. So there it is, that's the origin on zero, zero. And the total size of the radar, let's put it up there. And it's about 145, okay? So let's define here a float for the radar chart size. And let's put it at 145. So here the attack vertex will be pointing upwards by our radar chart size multiplied by our stats dot get stats amount normalized of our attack stat. All right, so that's it. We have the correct position for our attack vertex. Let's also put an int for the attack vertex index and this will be on index one. So in here, let's just set our attack vertex in there just to make sure that everything works. Let's see. Okay, here we are, and there it is. That point is indeed at half of the size. So let's increase it, and there you go. The triangle correctly updates, goes up, and it goes down. Okay, awesome. So now let's also update our defense vertex. Now to keep things simple, let's first do it just horizontally, so a 90 degree angle. So we need a vector three for the defense vertex. In this case, let's go to the right. And we do pretty much the same map, except in here, our defense. Now let's also define a defense vertex index. This is just to help us keep our code nice and readable. So the attack vertex is that one, defense is that one, and defense vertex. So using these variables helps us make sure that our triangles are correct. So our triangle starts off at the origin, then goes towards the attack vertex, and then goes towards the defense vertex, and that makes our triangle. All right, so we have a triangle pointing up and one to the right, showing the attack and the defense. Let's see. And yep, there it is, and the attack is indeed at half, and the defense also in there. So we can increase the attack, increase the defense, and yep, there it is, awesome, we have our triangle nicely updated. Okay, awesome. So far, so good. So this is looking great right now. However, we want to display five stats, so the defense isn't supposed to be shown at a 90 degree angle, but rather at an angle that makes for our five sides. So let's go to the code. And in here, let's first calculate that angle. So we are going to call it our angle increment, which will be 360 divided by five sides. And now in here, we can apply this angle based on our vector. So in here, the attack vertex is pointing upwards. Now let's apply the rotation. So we go into quaternion.euler, zero on the X, zero on the Y, and we only modify the Z. And now the Z will be our angle increment multiplied by the index that it is on the increment. So this one is on zero. So over here, what we're doing is essentially applying a rotation onto our upwards vector. So the attack will be rotated on zero However, the one on the defense will be rotated by an index of one. So this might seem confusing, but it all makes sense once you see the code in action. So everything else stays the same. And now let's see if it does follow the right corner for our five-sided polygon. And yep, there it is. It is indeed working. However, the angle is inverted, but the correct thing is working. So as we increase the defense, as you can see, it goes straight along that line and the attack goes straight along that line. So let's just reverse it. So in here, instead of going positive on the angle, let's go on the negative. 
and there it is and everything looks awesome so we increase the defense and our radar chart does indeed increase up to a maximum and up to a maximum there it is our nice perfect triangle awesome okay so at this point we have pretty much everything done all we need to do is add the remaining stats so let's go back into our stats class and over here let's add all of them so let's add speed mana and finally health so we just add them onto our enums and also in here and on the constructor we receive all our starting values and the last thing we need is over here on our nice switch Alright, so that's it. We should be able to have our stats class correctly holding every single one of our stat types. So now let's add the remaining labels over here in the editor. Alright, so there it is, our nice labels. Now we just need to go into our UI script. And over here we add the remaining vertices. Now in here, the tricky thing will be the size of our arrays. For the vertices, it's very easy. We have five points plus the origin, so we have six vertices. For the UVs, it must be the same size as the vertices, so also a six. And now for the triangles. Now remember, each triangle requires three vertices. So in this case, we're going to display all our five stats with five triangles, so we need three times five triangles. Okay, so let's test again to make sure that our first triangle is still correct. And in order to do that, we just need to go into testing and add all the remaining ones. Okay, let's test. Here we are, and yep, our initial triangle still works, okay. Now let's add the next triangle. First, we define the vertex and the index. So the next one is the speed. And here we increment the angle by one more, so this one is two. And the speed will be on vertex index three. So in here we need another triangle, so let's copy all these three positions. Now this will be on index three, four, and five. Now the first point will be the origin, so start off at zero, yep. Then we go into our defense, and then we go into the speed vertex. So that's how we make our second triangle. And just like that, we should be able to see the speed in our radar chart. And yep, there it is, we have three points, let's increase defense, and yep, there you go, defense goes up, and the speed is in there at about five, and the attack goes up, and yep, awesome. All right, so we are correctly displaying our three values in our radar chart. Now let's add the remaining two. Alright, so here it is, all of our values. All I did was add these new variables and increase the angle increment on each of them as well as the index. Then we define all six indexes and finally all of the triangles. As you can see, the final triangle connects the origin onto the health vertex and onto the attack vertex. This is the final one. So let's test. And yep, there it is, our five stats are now being displayed in our nice radar chart. All right, so at this point, pretty much everything is working. And here we have our nice testing buttons. Let's increase the speed and see if that one increases. And yep, there you go, it increases the mana. Yep, just like that, and the health, just like that. Let's put them all at the maximum. And yep, there you go, they all occupy the background perfectly. Increase, and yep, they're awesome. All right, so now we can polish this up a bit by adding our UVs. Now the UV defines what point in the texture corresponds to that vertex. So over here I have a nice gradient line. It's a very simple tiny texture. So essentially the origin will be on the left side and all the other points on the right side. So over here in our radar chart code, let's go in here to set up the UV. Now 
Now in here for the origin will be on the left side, so we can simply put it on vector 2.0. And for the others, we could, for example, make a UV where each vertex would have a different color. So the attack would be in red, defense in blue, and so on. We could do that with the UV. But in this case, let's make them all the same color and just use the gradient from left to right. So on all of these, let's simply put vector 2.1 in our two stretch to the right side. All right, so that's it. That's our UVs. Now, since we're adding the UV, we also need to go up here on our radar canvas mesh render. As you can see in here, we're passing the material and let's also pass our texture. So up here, let's make another serialized field. This will be the texture 2D for our radar texture. And we're going to use that at the same place that we use our material. So in here, let's just drag the gradient line. All right, awesome, let's see how it looks. And if there it is, now we have our nice texture being applied. As you can see at the edge, we have our white border and darker on the inside, and we can increase it to the maximum. And just like that, there's our nice final texture being applied into our radar chart. Okay, so this is pretty much our completed element. Let's just add some polish. Alright, so here we have our nice radar chart displaying all of our stats and some nice buttons to play around with. We can see the internal values, we can increase and decrease, we can randomize and there you go, they're all very nice and random, and just a fun nice little animation. The code to display our radar chart is completely separate from our inner stats class. So our code is nice and clean and we could easily modify this to add as many stats as we needed. So you can use this in any game where you would like to display some stats, or you can just use the underlying stats class which has been very carefully constructed. So that's it, and this is our very nice final effect. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time!